Hi, my name is Dynam and I'm creating a roguelike shooter called Death Inc. In this game, Death Inc is a company that deals in, well, death. They employ some of the most dangerous people on the planet and their entire office is filled with armed mercenaries. Your job, putting them out of business, once and for all. But this wasn't always the idea I had for the game, and to fully understand how we got here, we have to go back to the very start, and it all began right after I finished my previous game. I was finally done with my platformer game that I'd been working on for 4 months, but I had no idea what I was going to do next. So I sat down, picked up a drawing tablet, and started brainstorming. Eventually I settled on creating a roguelike, because I'd seen dozens of other game developers make them, and it didn't seem that difficult. With roguelikes you don't have to worry about things like levels, the only thing you have to do is make one single great experience that is enjoyable to replay, perfect for a solo developer like me. So roguelike it was, and start I did. I drew a simple gun, made it rotate around the player, made it point towards the mouse, and made it shoot. After I did that, I wrote a script that allows us to implement any gun we wanted to the game by simply changing the variables. Want the gun to be more accurate, have a higher fire rate, a smaller magazine, or shoot rainbow bullets in a random order, you can do all of that without writing a single line of code. This will allow us to easily add tons of different guns to the game, making it way more interesting. With the gun finished though, the player was the next thing on the list, and originally the design was completely different to what it is now. It was a sort of robot with a giant TV for a head. I chose this because I thought it would be easier to animate than something organic, and I was right. The animations were a breeze to make, although the rolling animation did take some time. I now had the basics of the game done, and I was pretty confident that I was going to be able to finish this game, so I made a community post teasing the game I was currently working on. However, but right after that, everything changed. I was in the process of adding enemies to the game, but I wasn't able to come up with a design that looked good. It either didn't fit the style, was impossible to animate, or was just plain ugly. No matter how many times I tried, it just didn't work. One of the reasons was that I just had no clue where this game was taking place, or what theme I should follow. To try and fix this I made some concept art for a setting I thought would look cool, and this is where the game taking place in an office came from, and honestly I fell in love with this idea the moment I was done drawing. However when I put it in the game, it just didn't really work, and I had no idea what an armed robot was doing in an office building. Now I had two choices, change the setting, or change the player. I decided I loved the office setting too much, and our lovely robot had to go. Luckily, in the concept art I'd included two people, one employee of the company, and someone who could be our new player. I made some animations, put the art into the game, and it looked really good. Except the gun didn't really fit anymore, so I replaced it, which thanks to the system we made earlier, was incredibly easy. Now we truly have a good basis that we can build the rest of the game on, and speaking of the rest of the game, we still have enemies to make. So I took the other guy from the concept art, gave him some new clothes, and put him in the game. But currently he's just kind of standing there. We need to add enemy logic. This is going to be quite a challenge. Alright, so I started off very simple, with the enemy moving towards the player's position, but since this wasn't very realistic, I made it stop once it reaches a certain radius around the player. The enemies are going to have guns, so this makes the most sense, they need to be close, but not too close. However, there is a slight issue with this system, as it works fine when there are no obstructions, but once we introduce something like a desk, it all falls apart. This is when I became really nervous, as I knew what I needed to do but I didn't know if I had the strength to do it. I had to add pathfinding. I had hoped the day would never come, but here it was. Desperately I started searching for a tutorial, something easy, something simple, but the moment I saw that Brachys video, I knew it was going to be alright. All my fears faded away as I listened to a beautiful Danish man explaining exactly what I needed to do. So it turns out it isn't actually that difficult. There's this project called ASAR that basically has everything we need and it's incredibly easy to use. Within no time I had a weirdly rotated version of the player following me around the desk. It can now detect where there is something it should avoid and find a path around it, and the best part is that I didn't have to code a single thing. 
and after I got it all working, I added back the old code to make it stop when it gets too close, with the addition of making it move around objects when they're obstructing its line of view. This means it will only stop following the player when it has a clear shot of them and isn't too far away. This system was working really well for a single enemy, but once you add a couple more, they just kind of cluster up and become one big blob following you around. To fix this, I added some randomization to the enemy destinations, and made the pathfinding avoid other enemies, and now it works like a charm for any amount of enemies we need. And with movement sorted, the next thing we need to do is make them able to shoot. So I copied the gun script, tweaked it a bit to make it automatically shoot, and gave the enemy a gun with it. The first time this didn't really work, it aimed at the player, but it wasn't actually shooting. But after a quick rework of the code, I fixed the issue, and now we have an enemy that can shoot back. And as a quick bonus, rolling now allows us to avoid the enemy bullets by making us temporarily invincible, which we are definitely going to need as this game is quickly turning into a bullet hell game. But what do you need in a bullet hell game, besides a way to avoid the bullets? Guns. Lots and lots of guns. So let's make a few. First we have the gun we've been using this entire time. It was fine as a generic gun, but now we need something a bit more interesting. So I turned it into a shotgun. It fires very slow, but the bullets are huge and do a ton of damage, making it well worth using this gun. I also added a ton of camera shake to help sell the slow but powerful gun effect. Next up we have a really simple but important addition to the game, a handgun. This will most likely be the standard weapon that you start out with, and it's also the weapon used in the intro. It has a relatively high fire rate, but doesn't do a huge amount of damage, however the accuracy is pretty good, making well up for that. It's basically the perfect neutral gun. The next gun is visually quite a bit different from the rest, it's a laser gun. I made it to showcase that not all guns in this game have to be boring regular guns, they can also be weird and unique. The laser gun functions similarly to the handgun, its fire rate is a bit lower, but that is well made up by its higher damage and bullet speed. It is also currently the only weapon in the game with 100% accuracy. The last gun I want to showcase is the rifle. Now I'm pretty sure that the art of this gun isn't actually a rifle, but some sort of other gun, but I know literally nothing about guns or their names, so I'm just going to call it a rifle for now. This is the first automatic gun of the game, meaning you don't have to spam the left mouse button, instead you just hold it to release a storm of bullets shooting towards wherever you're aiming. Now I don't have to tell you that it has a high fire rate, however its damage is laughably low, meaning you'll have to hit your target a lot for them to die. But those are all the guns I'm going to add for now. The basics of this game are pretty much done, and I'm quite confident in saying that this game will get finished. However, there's still a lot for me to do, and next devlog I'm tackling procedural generation, so wish me luck, and make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. I am loving this game so far, and I hope you enjoyed this first devlog of it. I will see you in the next one. Bye.